Hey guys, my name is Mayank and in this video, we'll talk about Cursor IDE and how we can integrate that in our iOS development workflow. So first, let's see what is Cursor AI. It's an AI code editor that lets you build your application in an agentic coding manner. Now let's download macOS app for Cursor so that you can start off with developing your application. So for those who are new to this, go to cursor.com and download the macOS application right from here. Once you have downloaded the application, you would find that if you open the app, you have three options. If you can, you can open the project, you can clone the repo, or you can just get the repo connected with SSH. So these are the three options. And to get started with creating our very first Xcode a project using cursor, you need to first create Xcode project. So let's, let's go to Xcode. So we'll open Xcode. I have the latest Xcode version on my Mac installed. I'll create a new project, select an iOS application next, and I'll name it, let's say Aqua Track. I want to build an application that can track a user's water intake on a daily basis. So that's the name for the application. I'll click on next and I'll just save it on desktop and hit create. That's it. And you can also see that we have code intelligence feature in Xcode. So yeah. Now let's go to cursor so that we can integrate our Xcode project with it. So we'll open the project the one that we have just created using Xcode. We'll go to desktop and we'll select AquaTrack over here and we'll click on open. Once you click open, you would find that all your files inside the Xcode project can be seen here in cursor itself. Now cursor is going to act like your primary IDE and you will use Xcode just to do some other functions which cursor is not able to do yet. So you will find here in cursor, you have a chat option where you actually write the prompt and ask cursor to build something. You can see that it currently has a context of AquaTrack app.swift file. But what we want to do is when we talk to an LLM, like cursor has LLMs sitting behind the scene with which we are talking and actually creating the application. So we have to give some context to the LLM so that they can understand what are we expecting from them and what is the fact the statement that will help them to predict the next thing that we want from them. So in order to do that, we can go to the settings of cursor and we can do a couple of things which are actually required for cursor to be used in the right way. The indexing and docs and under indexing and docs, you would find that under docs, we have Apple HIG and Swift UI documentation already connected with our cursor. You can just click on the add doc button copy paste the link of swift ui documentation swift documentation apple human interface guidelines documentation everything you can just copy paste here and you can just let cursor know that whenever i'm prompting something you have to take this in context so that you do not hallucinate much well now that we are good with it now at this point what i can do is i can just directly go to the chat feature of cursor and write that just build an app for me which is a water tracking app for a user but i'll not do that because Yes, we do have the context of a lot of things that we actually require to build a good application. For example, we have added in docs that we have Apple HIG, we have Swift UI, and then under rules, we do not have something yet. So by rules, I mean, when you're building an application, even in a production setting, uh, your team has a certain rule to follow, certain protocols to follow, certain guidelines to follow. So it is similar to that only. You cannot just assume cursor to know everything about yourself, how you want to build the application, what not to do, what to do. So you have to make sure that you set up certain rules before you build the application using cursor. So for that, we'll go to the rules tab under settings of cursor. And here you will find that it has user rules and project rules. Now user rules is for the agent. Now what you want to tell agent to behave like that's user rules and project rules is specific to what you want that behavior to be with certain text stats that you're using in your application. Let's say I'm using Swift UI framework. I'm using some database, let's say Postgres uh, database. So all these text stacks that are involved in building your application, there has to be a certain way in which this agent should behave with them. So for that purpose, I can add multiple rules under project rules so that when I am creating the application, whenever I'm prompting something, agent can actually understand what not to do and how to behave with a certain prompt. With that said, uh, under project rule, we will add our PRD file, which is project requirement document. And to create the PRD file, I'll use chat GPT. And you would find that I have already a prompt written down for me so that I can just uh, save some time to make you understand what I'm going to do. So I've written, I want to build an iOS app using Swift UI framework. The app idea is water intake tracker for the user. And here is the following features of the application. 
Now you need to define what all features you want for your application. Otherwise, cursor will just assume all the features that you require and they might not be the same as you are expecting it to be. So it's important that you firstly write down what all features you want cursor to build for you. So that's why we have written Number one, we want the user can set the maximum limit of water intake of the day. That's important. Then the app should remind the user to drink water at every two hour interval. That is something which is hard coded. But then I write over the day and this time interval should be customizable by, by user as well. Third, the app has a beautiful UI where every water intake can be seen. Now, this is something that I did based on my taste. I want application to be looking really great. Uh, that's optional. It's not like something which is which has to be done only. Fourth, the app has option to reset all the save settings. So basically, I have given it a framework of what all features I require from the application. Now, at the end, I write create a PRD file including hierarchy of the file structure for this app. Considering I want to use this PRD file under project rules in Cursor IDE. Now, even while talking to ChatGPT, I'm making sure that I'm very clear with what I need from ChatGPT. So I have clearly defined the PRD file requirements and the features that I require. And based on that, it gives me the response. It creates a PRD file for me. I converted that to a markdown file so that I can easily copy paste it to project rules under cursor. So here is our file you can see. And I'll just copy this from here and we'll paste it in our project rules settings, project rules setting under cursor. Add rule, I'll name it PRD. And by default, it takes MPC file and I'll just paste it over here. So this is how our PRD file looks like. If you want to make some changes to it, then please feel free. This is something that I'm showing you as a demo, but this is the way to go ahead. You even have a file structure defined already in place so that cursor knows how to structure your folders. Now, let's say you want to you want to follow a MBBM architecture, then you can already have that architecture in place so that while building that application, Cursor can also follow it. There's one more thing left to be checked before we go ahead with this step. And that is the auto run functionality. So this you will find under the chat uh, bar. So you will go here, you will see that uh, we have an option called auto run mode. And what this option lets us do is it allows agents to run tools like command execution and file writes without asking for permissions or confirmations. And that is somewhat good and scary as well. That's why they have two more options, command that are going to be there in the allow list and command that are going to be there in the deny list. So now cursor can do a lot of things which might require permissions from your side earlier. By enabling this option, you are just bypassing it. So you can just easily define what you want from it, what all permissions you want to get it and whatever you want to restrict it for. And this is very important to understand. I'll not go deeper into this, but yeah, we will just enable this so that our task can be done quite smoothly. Now, I think we are all set to write our first prompt. So I'll write it an iOS app that tracks the water in the user daily. It's pretty follow the rules defined under PRD dot mdc and do follow the documentation of apple human interface guideline and switch one if you want you can also add swift documentation so that all this setting has been done so that you can avoid the agent to hallucinate like not go on a path that you do not want it to go so we are trying to maximize our possibility to minimize uh, this behavior from the agent. Now that we have written that, uh, we have PRD also in context since we have also given, a, given it a mention in the prompt. So with all that in place, I'll just hit enter and see what happens next. You'll find that it starts reading documentation and start planning the next steps. The best part about creating this PRD file is that now cursor knows what all features you require step by step and it will keep checking on these particular features in the file until it's done. So we will just wait for a few seconds until cursor is done with its magic. Meanwhile, I would like to highlight one more thing in the settings which we sort of missed out while talking about the rules. 
you would also see that we had user rules. So under user rules, we have already given something which is like you are a senior software engineer specializing in building highly scalable and maintainable systems. So this is a big uh, prompt again, uh, which includes the behavior that I am expecting from the agent. And this is not specific to any framework. This is not spe specific to any tech stack that we are going to use in the application. This is more generic to how I want the agent to behave while I talk to it. All right, uh, I'll just go back to what's happening with the creation of an application using cursor. And you can see that it has created a lot of folders, models, services, utilities, and it is creating other files as well based on the requirement written down in the PRD file. The best part in our case here is that I'm not just using cursor AI, but since I have updated my Xcode, to Xcode uh, 26. I am also going to use coding intelligence features if I come across any errors in the project after this prompt response completes. Now it's creating the beautiful Swift UI views, uh, which we explicitly mentioned while creating a PRD file. So the noob way or naive way of doing it uh, was that I would not care about writing any rules. I would not care about uh, going ahead with adding any context, like I added some documents, uh, documentation of Apple. That could have been a possibility, but that is not the best way of doing it. That is good if you want to just understand what this tool does. But if you really want to create something that is actually going to be in a production stage, then you need to make sure that you are following certain uh, guidelines, which makes your app robust at the end of the day. One more thing uh, which you can definitely do in Cursor is uh, now here is a new protocol called MCP, Model Context Protocol. So you can actually connect a MCP, Xcode MCP with your Cursor AI so that you can have more control over what you can do on Xcode. Like one of the things that Cursor cannot do alone at this point is running your application by itself without using any extension, without using any other MCP support, it cannot really do that. Uh, but with the support of these type of protocols or extensions, you can actually have more control over what all can be done uh, in Xcode without even touching it. If you go back to your Xcode project, you would find that all these new folders are here now. All these files are here now inside these folders, which is pretty amazing. And uh, let's just hope that we do not get a lot of errors while we run this project. Oh, it's going to write the unit test cases. I'm just going to stop it here uh, because I don't want unit test cases as of now. Uh, and let's head back to our export project and see what all we have so far. And let's try to run it first. As expected, there are a few errors which we need to resolve. All right, after spending some five, 10 minutes, I believe now all the issues have been resolved. So I will just click on the run button. So it will build and run the project. And let's see what we have got. So the project is currently building and it is successfully built. Now we're waiting for it to run on our iOS 16 Pro simulator. Well, there you go. Now we have our final application with us. You can see it's asking us to allow the notification, which we said for the reminder. And it has uh, a lot of buttons. Even I need to check for what all these buttons can do. You can find that we have a tab bar controller where we can see the history, where we can also see the settings. Looks like the history uh, view is a bit distorted. So we'll check that uh, later. But as far as the setting uh, part goes, it looks pretty clean. And the home view also looks pretty clean. Let's try to see if this works. Yes, if I try to add 250 milliliter of water to my current intake of the day, then it actually adds it to the UI. And this was a very first prompt that I wrote using which we reached to this stage. Now you'll prompt more to get a better version of it. Uh, even before doing this video, I tried it out uh, just using one prompt and the UI was looking so beautiful. I'll show you that uh, right away because I cannot uh, wait for you to see that one. Uh, it was with the name Hydro Track and uh, this is the UI that I got from the very first prompt that I did and solved some error that I got on the go. And uh, it had the same functionalities. You can just add 500 milliliters of water. 
you had a history tab as well which is pretty dope in comparison to what we got this time and it has settings tab as well so this is all about how you can use cursor ai in your ios development workflow so if you like this video and you want me to do more such videos in future please feel free to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel i'll see you in the next one bye bye